Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's do some very quick, but I'll tell you, it's one of the most requested things I get. Stay tuned. So to all of my new subscribers that have joined in the last couple of days, welcome. And to everyone who has been supporting my channel, thank you so much. I really do appreciate all of the positive support I get from you guys. And today I am going to do a request that I get from a lot of you. It is not going to take us very long to do this, but it is something that will be very beneficial to you, especially as we go into the holiday season. And here is what I'm talking about. This is just a box, but it is a box that is designed to hold a standard size mug. And I designed it so that the mug would fit inside, but it would fit inside just perfectly. So if you have a standard size mug or a cup and you need something for it, this box is the box for you. So this mug measures approximately four inches high and with the handle is almost five inches across. And without the handle, we're looking at about three and a half inches. So those were the measurements that I used to create our fun custom box. And as you can see, plenty of room for this mug. And then when we put it in, you can see how nicely that fits. You won't have a mug that's bouncing all over the place. You could actually tuck some shredded paper in. Super easy to make, super quick to make. Let's make it. So I am going to bring in my scoreboard and two pieces of 12 by 12 paper. And we are going to score both of these pieces exactly the same. So our first score is going to be at half an inch. Then our second score will be at four. Our third score will be at eight and a half. Then we're going to rotate it and we will score at three and a half. Rotate it again to the opposite side of that three and a half inch score and score again at three and a half. So I'll do that again with this one. So we're going to make our first score at half an inch. Then we're going to score at four. And then we'll score at eight and a half. Then we're going to rotate this just like that. And we'll score at three and a half. And then we're going to rotate it once and rotate it again and you'll have that three and a half inch score on this side and we're going to score again at three and a half. So on the end where you have this half inch score that is the top of our box. So let's just go ahead and fold and burnish all of these scores. Okay guys, so once we have our scores folded and burnished, we are going to remove these two corner pieces. So we are going to remove them all together. So we're going to go up to that score mark and drag straight down. And I get a lot of questions about how I'm able to cut so straight with my finger blade. And um, I have a video out there, but I'll show you guys in this one how I hold my blade. So I've got my blade with my finger on the top, just like that. My thumb is here on the silver part. And then my middle finger is sandwiching the blade in between my thumb and my middle finger, just like this. 
Then I'm going to use these two fingers, my ring finger and my pinky finger as stabilizers. So when I'm cutting, I'm going to have these two fingers brace the board. So when I'm dragging down, these two fingers are pressed down and they help me to guide straight. Now it'll take some practice, but if you get in the habit of holding your blade like this, where you can see how my middle finger and my thumb are sandwiching that blade with my finger on top and these two fingers act as stabilizers. If you get in the habit of doing it like this, pretty soon all of your cuts will be fairly straight. So now what I'm going to do is come to this end and I am going to just drag straight down and then I'm going to go ahead and just remove these pieces. And so I'm going to be left with this. Now I'm going to set that to the side, bring in the other piece of my box, and here at the bottom, where I remove these pieces all together, we're not going to do that. We are simply going to turn it to the side and cut out this way. And you'll know it's the side because here is that top flap. So turn it this way and then cut straight out. Then I'm going to angle in just a little bit and then I'll reduce that in size and I'll rotate it to this side and do the same thing. And then I'll angle in and then I'm just going to reduce it. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and angle my end pieces here just a little. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it towards us this way, go up to that second score mark and drag straight down. Then we're going to angle in and then we're going to reduce this. And I'm going to angle over here just a little as well. So I'll come over to this side, do the same thing, drag down angle in, angle in, and reduce. So once we've done that, we're going to have two pieces that look like this. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take this piece and we're simply going to fold it in because we don't need it. But I don't want to toss it because it'll just give us some added strength to this box. So I'm just going to angle in a little bit and reduce just to make sure it's not too big. And so now I'll take my glue and I am going to put glue on this. You can use tape, you can use tape runner. On this part, I'll put that down. Then I'm going to get this nice and stuck. And now we have this piece and we're going to take this piece and join it to this piece, just like that. And the way that we're going to do that for me, I like to use glue on this portion because I have that wiggle room. You can do it with tape because it is a box that is going to bear weight. I would not do this with a tape runner. I would use a good double stick tape if you are planning on using tape on this. So we're going to place it right there. You can flip it over and get it stuck down. And yes, I do have my diamonds going in the opposite directions, but I am not going to stress over that. So now that we have it like this, we can take our box and we can put it together. So this is the tab that will join and we are just going to put it together just like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my glue 
place it on my tab, and then I'll join this together. Now I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up this piece and get it nice and stuck. And y'all know I would not be me if my pattern was not going in the wrong direction. So now I'll take this side. I am going to add my glue to this flap. Then I'm going to bring this piece up. And I'll go on the inside with my bone folder and get that nice and stuck. But before I close my box, I am going to go ahead and just take my scissors and nip at a little angle right there so that it'll be easy for me to close this box. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my glue, place glue on this piece, making sure that I place glue on the edge. We are not going to place any glue on this piece, only on the part beneath that score mark. So now that I have my glue on, I am going to take this and I am going to make sure that the top matches. So wherever this fold score is, it matches up with that. So now I can lay this down go on the inside and we get everything nice and stuck then I'll take my spatula and just smooth everything out and we'll do the same thing over here so I'm just gonna fold that back so that we know not to put any glue on it and again this is a weight bearing box so I would not use a tape runner And because I'm using a very heavy cardstock, by doubling up the bottom, I really don't need to put chipboard in the base. But if your cardstock is not a heavy cardstock, you might need to add a chipboard base. So, what I'm doing here is I am making sure again that my tops match. And then once they match, I'll come on the inside with my big old spatula get that stuck and get that stuck. So now we have our box and I love how that looks. Even though my diamonds aren't going in the right direction, I'm okay because it looks pretty doggone good to me. So I am going to open this up, take this beautiful mug. It's a standard size mug that says blessed, put it on the inside, and y'all can see that we have a mug that fits inside of this box very securely. So now I am going to close it and we're going to decorate it. All right guys, so I have these stickers that I bought when I took my little road trip to Spartanburg, South Carolina. And I am going to take the one that says spooky and I am going to place it down on a piece of my scrap leftover paper and I am just going to trim out and create myself just a little piece of ephemera. So just a small piece. And when you have scraps this size, that's one of the good reasons not to throw them out because you can always use them as a backer piece on a sticker and then turn that sticker into a chipboard sticker, which is exactly what I've done here. So I am going to take this, keep these very simple, I'm going to place that right there, take my glue, place some glue, put that spooky right there, and now we have a sweet custom mug box. I could add some more to this if I wanted to, but I'm not. 
I'm just going to leave it. And for those of you who have been asking for boxes to hold mugs, this is perfect for that. This box is also perfect for holding candles. This box is perfect for holding toiletries. There are so many different things that you can put in this box. It's also a great box for holding socks. So don't just limit yourself to mugs. Even though I'm making this because of the multiple mug box request I get, this box is multifunctional and it's perfect for any reason, any season, any gender guys. So I am bringing the first one back in so you guys can see all of this box goodness going on. And when finished, these boxes measure five across, four and a half high and three and a half deep. So like I said, perfect for a whole multitude of things that you might need a box for. So guys, I hope you have liked this fun custom box project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys be safe, be kind, Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye. GoPro, stop recording.